بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على محمد خاتم النبيين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل أقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم افتح فتوه العارفين اللهم افتح علينا حكمتك وانشر علينا رحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام نويت التعلم والتعليم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم والدعاء للهدى والدلالة على الخير افتضاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم الحمد لله praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى as we write as we praise praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى is begin the end and everything that is in between praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى has given us iman keeping us with the ahl iman keeping us with the ahl al-Quran having moments that we can say the beautiful shahada say the beautiful words of Allah سبحانه وتعالى as kitab al-Quran al-Azim we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he keeps us always in his beautiful company <coughs> in the, in, with the uh, Ahl al-Salawat and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and with the Ahl al-Quran and with the Ahl al-Allah and, and the Arif billah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he keeps us with those who will get us closer to Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whatever we're hearing of our times and seeing of our times and what we're experiencing know that these are just pages of our lives that are turning over once one goes the other one has to any shadow away and that's life isn't it so it can never be a constant it can never be all one way it can't just be happy times it can't just be sad times or kind of painful times dunya that's what dunya is it's ups and downs happy times and sad times and good times and funny times and childhood and then you you know your teenage life and then your youth and then your adult and older than your decrepit old age Allah protect us these are all part of life and we've already been told this but it always surprises us always catches us off guard it's because we're too engrossed in the things that are around us that were meant to be there just to aid us in remembering our true purpose which is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's all we were created for and the second thing that we were created for was to be good to the ibad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala two things that prevent illnesses from uh, afflicting you one is uh, prophylaxis or what we we'll can class as something which uh, preventatives and the second thing is doing khidmah to the khalq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the two things and that's why wherever you see where uh, even balas and calamities and plagues even if they were afflicted as long as they kept the you know the they did the, whatever they could to prevent uh, themselves getting ill or others getting ill from them etc then they were protected. Why? Not because that they felt that they were greater than the makar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but because they took the way of caution, a caution but trusted in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second thing is a beautiful quality, the, the help of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. You can never be destroyed while you're in the khidmah of the people. Allah will look after you. Allah will look after you. And you might say that what about these uh, all these uh, frontliners in the NHS that are being taken out and that's a mercy for them even if they're taken out and even if we're taken out who knows what our end is going to be but whatever it is and wherever it comes it's going to be a beautiful moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect everyone by khidmah so one of the things that we hear in the Quran I was mentioning it uh, on, on our journey the other day that we were speaking in al insana khuliqa halua إِذَا مَسْلَهُ الشَّرُّ جَزُوعًا وَإِذَا مَسْلَهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created insan uh, in a state of panic, uh, agitation, uh, anxious. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever, whenever uh, something afflicts him, he starts getting uh, a bit you know, scared in his heart, he gets frail in his beliefs or his convictions. And, and when he gets good times, oh, forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he just he wants to... And he, he wants to deny the favors of his Lord. He said, I did this, I did this, and I did this. That's insan. Except for the ones who are, you know, like firm in their prayers. Give zakat, help the others and stuff. Give to the poor, to the miskeen, the masakeen, and helping them, good and bad times, whatever it is. That was the order that Allah 
subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to worship him in good times and Allah subhanahu wa worship him in not so good times. That's what we were told, not just in the good times. Or forget him in the good times and just worship him in the bad times. So these are all moments, inshallah, where we enter in these shamail classes and we remind ourselves how the Prophet was. Uh, you'll almost be, you'll almost be, if you, if you didn't know his seerah, as we've been through the seerah, we know now, alhamdulillah. But if we didn't know his seer and you just were introduced to just the Ishmael, you'll think that there's nothing ever happened bad in his entire life. You'll be thinking he's a person who's just had it so easy, so smooth. Allah's looked at everything, and no doubt Allah has. But if you read his seerah, in every part of it, it's going to be like tragedy after tragedy after hardship after hardship. And even through that, what we're entering over here, you're going to be wondering, like, how do you compare the two together? Because the hardships do not display that in the, inside the khuliqa halu'a. Why? Because the Prophet was giving us a higher ethic. His akhlaq was something which is totally different from that seerah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given him. That despite having all the hardships, he would still show a beautiful smile, he showed beautiful akhlaq. His enemies that were harsh against him, and they were unrelenting against, against him. That he was just uh, unrelenting in being kind to them, and being beautiful to them. This is the akhlaq, and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us gather into this beautiful khuluq of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fi sifati khuluqihi, the beautiful character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we enter with that intention that Allah you know, doesn't um, make us forget ourselves, make us forget our, uh, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and make us forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these lockdowns. It's a lockdown, no doubt, but we can call it a khalwa for us, inshallah, for the believers. That we can become connected to Allah and become connected to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, everything that you see in around the world with this agitation inside of the hearts of the people. That even like, maybe, you know, like a, three months, four months ago, you would not have seen, if anything of these would have occurred in them times, people might have overlooked them. But because now the nafs has been battered, the nafs has been really bruised, and now you're seeing this, this ad, somebody, they just want something, they want to vent something out. And it's not that, it's the nafs that's, that's been just shown that you are not in control anymore. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the nufus inside of us, that beast inside of us, that you're not in control anymore. Even if you want to go out, you can't go out. Even if you want to go back to work, you can't go. Even if you want to you know, enjoy yourself how you used to, you can't do it. I'm in charge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what the nafs, for the first couple of days, maybe he can take it. But after a while, it, now he needs to vent something out. Unless it's shackled with deen. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ is. His khuluq is that which shackles everything inside. And he teaches you how to then be, rise above it. And not let that beast inside run wild. Rather, the akhlaq, the khuluq is the internal thing. And that internal thing has to, then it needs focus. Because you can't see it. If you look in the mirror and you see your khalq, this disheveled and no one's been to a barber's in ages, so you know, the beards are looking disheveled and stuff, whatever. Or some people go to these illegal backstreet ones, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, and so <laughs> they put an arm and a leg for it. But you'll, you'll want to rectify that straight away. But with the khuluk, it's very hard. And that's why you need righteous people to remind you of what is righteous. And like the Prophet reminded us, and our ulama reminded us in the end times, when even if we don't have any access to any of the awliya, Allah protect us from ever seeing that time. But if you don't, then salawat and the Prophet will always guide you all the way. And we are fortunate that we can open the pages of these sulaha and these ulama and these, these greats that were the close ones to the Prophet So let's take from that, inshallah, and use this as a means of forcing ourselves to look at our internal. Not for the next man, not the one next to you, not the one in front of you or behind you, but to ourselves. We turn everything back. We turn back to Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by the words of the Musannif Alayhi Rahma wa nafa'ana Allah bi ulumihim. Qala Musannif, he says, Qala al-Qadi al-Iyad fi shifa. Went through the Ibarat last week. He said, Qala Wahb ibn Munabbih. Wahb ibn Munabbih is going to be one of the tabi'een and he's going to be a famous one at that and an alim at that. He says, and, and he was a... And, and he, uh, a person who had studied the previous scriptures of the, the Jews and the Christians and he had a lot of the scriptures and information from the, uh, the heavenly uh, books that were sent down before. So he says, he's saying now, so that's, that's giving it his uh, um, endorsement. 
قرأت في أحد وسبعين كتابة I studied 71 books Books from the previous books فوجدت في جميعها And I found in every single one of them A theme that's going to be common amongst all of them أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرجح الناس أقلا وأفضلهم رأيا Allahu Akbar They're telling you in them previous times And in them previous books A foretelling and a, of, of a, a Nabi that's going to come it says he's going to be the most aqwa and nas aqlan, the most strongest of them in the in his intelligence. Wa afdaluhum ra'yan and the most and the most best of them tadabiran. Uh, ra'yan means an opinion. Uh, yeah, that means tadbiran nashan min aqli al kabi is connected to his aql. So I went to do the things at the right time. How to use the aql that Allah has given you? Some people they have real a high amount of intelligence. But they don't have to use it. That's the hilm, that's the anchor, that's the conveyance for it. Using ilm and hilm together, that was, that was embodied in our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's giving you, why did he even mention that the Musannif? Musannif mentions that, Rahimullah Ta'ala, to give you an opening into it. He says, I'm not starting here, I'm starting from before. People that came before also were mentioning about the khuluq of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why did they mention aqal? It stems from there. The aqal is in the heart, the akhlaq is internal. Everything is a, a matter of the internal. And in another narration, same person, uh, Wahbi ibn Munabbih, Rahmatullah, he says, I found in all of them scriptures, Allah that he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't gift or give to anybody from creation from the from the beginning of the world, the entire creation rather. All the way until the end of the creation. Min al from intelligence. With regards to the person's in faculties of intelligence and, and, and cleverness, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Illa kahabbati ramlin, and he says, and to give a comparison, he says, it is like all of that, what he gave to everyone else, is like a dust particle, a, a, a drop of sand, according, uh, as opposed to what he was given, is like the sands of the entire world. You know, the deserts upon deserts. Count all the speck of uh, you know sun particles. That's that's what the Prophet was given. You were given just one. That's the akl of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And it sh- and, it, and Allahu akbar. And he says over here. And Imam Qustulani rahmatullahi says this is just giving you a prelude, an introduction to you know just the akhlaq of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He mentions in the Mawahib from Awarif al Maid who mentioned Imam Sahrawardi rahmatullahi shihabuddin Sahrawardi. It says, a lub wal aql mi'atu juz'in. It says, a lub, you can translate as ilm over here. Lub usually is used for aql, and in aql is, and he's used the word as well. So when it comes together, lub can mean uh, knowledge over here. So knowledge and intelligence has a hundred parts, or compartments, if you will. Tis'u wa tis'una, tis'atu wa tis'una fi nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa juz'un fi sa'il mu'mineen. He says 99 of them, all, or 99 parts of them, are going to be reserved for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, only one for the rest of the believers. Mm-hmm. Why did he differentiate even the believers over here? Mm-hmm. He says because anybody who's got Iman has got intelligence. Mm-hmm. Right? To know who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is. Mm-hmm. That's a faculty that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives insan, that he wants to you know, be of those people who know Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Otherwise you could be as fellow safirin, even worse than animals. They don't know, they just roam around the fields, chomping on grass and doing whatever they do. That's all they do. That's, they don't know anything else. Allah gave us aql. Shaitan wants to destroy that same thing, the aql. So he wants to destroy it by use of drugs, by use of sleep, by use of overeating. All of these things are detrimental to the aql, which Islam came to preserve. Because when you preserve it and you uh, enhance it and you look after it, you become the best of the best. Even better, even the angels... Then boast in front of Allah, you know, uh, say, I wish we could be like the Bani Insan, I wish we could be like them. They, they both, ha- although they don't even have the faculty of disobedience, but they, 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 they're not complaining because they don't have the, ma- you know, the, the ma'da inside of them. But what they do do is that, you know, they absolutely, what uh, 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 do you call if you will. Qala, wa man ta'amma la husna tadbirihi lil Arab. 
And whoever contemplates, this qala is referring to um, uh, Imam Suhra Wardi, Rahimullah Ta'ala in Awarif al Ma'arif. He says, Qala, wa man ta'amala husna tadbirihi, whoever contemplates on the, the beautiful management, how he did, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with the Arabs. Lil Arab al hum kal wahshi sharib. Allah Akbar. He says, those Arabs, he says, who's referring to how he was sent to the Arabs, the, how he managed them. And he says, hum kal wahshi sharib. Who were, were like scattered wild beasts. You know, that's the, you know, we say that he was sent to the uh, the Zaman al Jahiliya, he was sent to the people. They were, his, his, he's describing them as the wild uh, beasts that were scattered around in the midst of deserts, in this valley, on top of this mountain. That, that's what he says. Ma'atab il mutanafir il mutabaidi. He says that they had natural uh, you know, temp- temperaments. That they were repulsive and, and they were totally different from the natural order that Allah created them with. That's who he was sent to. So how he then led them. And then how he uh, put wahtamala means uh, he bore uh, their, their harshness. They were harsh with him and he just put up with it. And he had patience upon their afflictions or the trouble that they gave. Ila anin qadu ilayhi until they began to follow him. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They gathered around him. Waqatilu dun ahlihim wa abaahum wa abnaahum. And they would even fight those against uh, other than themselves. Even the fathers and the children they would fight for the sake of him. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Waqtaruhu ala anfusihim. And they would prefer him, وسلم, even above their own selves. And they would even do hijrah for his pleasure. Or even they live in their own homes and their own families and their loved ones. And this is all without any previous experience of the Prophet. He didn't go to no school to learn this. He didn't go to no college or to get a PhD or something for you know, how to deal with uh, you know, these wild ones. But he did this all of this. He didn't study any books for it. That he could have learned about how the previous prophets did it. He didn't have any of that them books. He couldn't read. He was an ummi. This proves one thing. Imam Suhru is saying that he was the most intelligent of all the creation. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَمَّا كَانْ أَقْلُهُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ صَلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ أَوْسُعُ الْعُقُولِ And when, when we understand that his intelligence is the most vast of all the intelligence that was given in this world لَا جَرَمَ إِتَّسَعَتْ أَخْلَاقُ نَفْسِهِ الْكَرِيمَةِ إِتِّسَاعًا لَا يُضِيقُ أَنْ شَيْءٍ It should be of no surprise that his comprehensiveness of this akhlaq that was, it was beautiful and really wide لَا يُضِيقُ أَنْ شَيْءٍ They had no... Um, uh, shortcomings inside of it. وَكَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ خُلُقُهُ الْقُرْعَانِ And now he's going to bring it into context now. He's saying the, the akhlaq of the Prophet وسلم, how was it then? We haven't seen him. We haven't been with him. We're not from his time. How was akhlaq of the Prophet وسلم? كَانَ خُلُقُهُ الْقُرْعَانِ He says you've got something that will show you. It's in front of you. You read it every day inshallah. He's, that Quran that you have, the Mus'haf, that was his character. Allahu Akbar. He says that's your glimpse into the life and the akhlaq of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Read it. Qala Imam Ghazali and Imam Ghazali Rahmatullah in his ihya, he mentions the hadith that he's referring to in this. He says, Qala Sa'ad ibn Hisham. Sa'ad ibn Hisham, he says, I entered, dakhaltu ala Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha. I entered upon, uh, uh, entered the house upon Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala and, and, and her father Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa ardahu. فَسَأَلْتُهَا أَنْ أَخْلَاقِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. I asked about the akhlaq of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. How was his akhlaq? He's asking a question. فَقَالَتْ And she replies, Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها, أَمَا تَقْرَعُ الْقُرْآنِ He says, do you not read the Qur'an? قُلْتُ بَلَا He says, of, of course I read the Qur'an. He says, I read the Qur'an. We know it. So like we're going to say, we read the Qur'an. We've got it with us. He says, so why are you asking? That's what, that's what she's saying. قَالَتْ كَانَ خُلُقُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم القرآن. He says, well then, the akhlaq of the Prophet was the Qur'an. And that's going to set the basis of everything that's going to come. 
Because now the Muslim beautifully puts it, إِنَّمَا أَدَّبَهُ الْقُرْآنُ بِمِثْلِ قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى He says now, he says when you hear that statement, you heard this hadith a lot, that his um, character was the Qur'an, what do you mean? He says his entire, his, the entire ayat of the Qur'an are going to be his khuluq. Everything that you read inside, you're going to see that this, this is going to display to you what the akhlaq of the Prophet was. He says, don't just take my word for it. Be mithli qawlihi ta'ala. He's going to mention many, many verses of the Qur'an to just give you a glimpse into it. Otherwise, just read the whole Qur'an. That's going to give you everything about the Prophet wasallam. He says the first one, beautiful. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. He says, خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَعْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِذَ الْجَاهِلِينَ Allahu Akbar. He says, take to the way of forgiveness and, and instruct uh, towards uh, kindness. وَأَعْرِذَ الْجَاهِلِينَ And turn away from the, the ignorant ones. And look at that, just one single verse of Surah Araf. You're going to see, take to the way of afwa. Afwa means to forgive people, to, uh, to put up with them, uh, their harshnesses towards you, their, their dealing, uh, you know, their... Uh, being treacherous with you, them conning you, uh, you know, even with your close ones or your the ones that are below you, you know, not showing you respect or uh, being disrespectful towards you. We're living in time of opposites. We need these ayats more than anything, and with it, by extension, we need the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's more than anything, because this is a time when everyone wants to vent mm. out, and no one's everyone's forgetting afwa. You want to be forgiven, you have to forgive. We have to learn to forgive. We're putting up with so many things, we're hearing so many things. What's happening is that the situations around us are forcing us to become uh, impatient. We're, we're losing our patience. We're, we're losing our control, as if it seems. So we need somebody to blame. Who's going to be that scapegoat? The first person, and it's usually, usually, it's your near and dear ones. And they're the ones who feel the brunt of it. And that's, that shouldn't be the case. Khudil Afwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. That is, he said, Khudil Afwa, he said, Unzu ila Habibi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah in that verse is saying, Look to my Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He took to the way of Afwa, look at it in his life. That's what he's saying. And by Allah, you, I mean, these the verses, we could, we, we could then skip straight to the seerah, and I'll give you hundreds and hundreds of examples. Hey, the ones who were nasty to him, the ones at Ta'if, the ones that were in Mecca, the Ahl Mecca, how he dealt with them at, the, at Fath in Mecca, how he dealt with the people who boycotted him for three years, how he dealt with the people you know, who were harsh to his family, to his daughters. All of these things are going to show you Khud al Afwa, take to the way of forgiveness. He says, Take, I did that. Wa'mur bil Urfi, Urf over here, Ma'ruf, that's what it means. So he says, and, and instruct towards kindness and goodness. Goodness could mean in anything. The Musannif mentions this word because the whole act of the Prophet was every single thing was kindness. It was nothing of jafa, there was nothing of harshness inside of his, his, his words or his fa'ls. Never did he ever hurt somebody, except even if, even if they thought he did, he would take them. And like at the time of Badr, when he, when he pokes the, you know, the Sahabi and stuff, he says, take your revenge. That's something the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa and even if he would have, he would have let him. But that was the, why the Sahabi was doing it. Allahu Allah Akbar. Allah. That's the way of... Uh, urf means be kind to people. Instruct to kindness. Now is the time to really, really reach out for people. To people with goodness and kindness. If you can get to the people who are every single person and illa masha'Allah are in a state of agitation. They need some kindness. And what they need real kindness. Why is this, you know, what we've seen? And I'm not trying to downplay it. You know, with what's happening in America or what's happening, you know, with these protests, wherever it is, everywhere you look in, everybody has a state of agitation, and a bit of kindness goes a long way. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. May Allah make us of those. Wa and al jahilin, and jahilin, you're gonna get them in every single generation, every single time, and it's really hard. Aarid and al jahilin is easy to read, it's beautiful to read, and we could we could read about the prophets and the, and the awliya. It's very very hard to do. It really needs working on. And it takes that you need to you annihilate your nafs. You have to take that takabur out of it. You are nothing. And when the jackals speak, let them speak. Sticks and stones may break my bones or whatever they say. These are the realities of what we need to be like. They're just words. And even if the actions rise above it as the Prophet says. So this verse he brings the Surah Arab. 
to show you that is the way of the Prophet وَقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى And then he says إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ In fact, Sayyidina Ibn Abbas Sayyidina mentions, rather Sayyidina Ja'far Sadiq and Ibn Abbas He says, لَيْسَ فِي الْقُرَانِ أَجْمَعَ أَجْمَعَ لِمَكَارِمِ الْأَخْلَاءِ مِنْ هَذِي الْآيَةِ He says, this verse خُذِ الْأَخْوَى وَأْمُرَنِ الْعُرْفِ وَعَادِنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ He says, that's the most jami' and the most encompassing verse of the Qur'an to display the akhlaq of the Prophet Allahu Akbar and then he brings the next verse indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you bil adli justice wal ihsani and to be um, and, and to have excellence in everything wa ita'i dhil qurba and to give 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 in, in assistance or in money in assistance in monetary assistance or aid or assistance in physically dhil qurba to your to your near and dear ones wa yanha and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits you from indecency, fahsha, wal munkar, and evil, wal baghi, and, and transgressions or uh, transgressions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in, that's the verse you hear where and every Friday is in khutbahs. We ask Allah to open our masajid up, inshallah, so that we can be fortunate to hear that, witness that, and be w- with one another, inshallah. In this verse, bil adli, Allahu Akbar, that's ayat tawheed, comes in the tafsir, tawheed. Adl can mean justice, so as I translated it. Also mean your, your beliefs. I be just in your beliefs. Oh, insaf. I be just in with one of your dealings or with the ones who are entrusted to you, etc., etc. Well, Ihsan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants excellence in everything that we do. So we can maybe feel in, in our lockdowns that you know we could spend a full day in our gym jams and our pajamas or whatever. And, and that could be the norm and stuff. And people can just you know, lose their norm, what they would have done in, in, when, when they're out and about. That could be the way. But you, but you, you can let everything else slip. You can let your, your, you know, your shabbiness and stuff and get into the mirror when you, you'll scare yourself. But that could be alright. But you never ever let your, your iman slip. You never let your sunnah slip. The sunnahs that you do inside the masajid, what you do in the public, has to be the same or even increase when you do it in the lockdown. So when people are just letting things go, or let it, they just happen, and forgetting, you know, what, how they used to wake up for your your Ramadans, mm-hmm. they used to wake up for Tahajjud, they used to read the Quran. That should be the norm, and never ever let Ihsan, Whatever you do, do it with goodness inside. So when you pray, you're in prayer, you're in the masjid. It might not be the same inside your own, own houses, but focus yourself. Who are you facing inside the, in in the masjid? Allah. And when you at home, Allah. When you read in Quran, in, in, uh, we used to enjoy it. We used to read it inside of the inside of Ramadan or outside of Ramadan. That's you still reading for Allah. Learn to be with yourselves with Allah. If this lockdown can teach us anything, is that hey, you're going to be in your grave one day and you're going to be alone. It's just going to be you and Allah, you and your actions, whatever you display, what you're going to take to Allah. Be don't be scared with your oneness with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. People have that wahsha inside of this and, they, and, they, and they're going crazy inside of their homes is because of that. It's because they don't know how to be with, in one with Allah. No one else, one to one with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, this teaches you. Ihsan. Wa ita idil qurba. Reach out to your good. You know, we can't, you know, social distancing, you can't visit your relatives. Everyone's feeling it. Everyone's feeling it. But at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you so many other avenues. <laughs> The darn Zoom and stuff, whatever you've got. But it's a beautiful thing as well. And we, like we said last week, shukr to Allah <laughs> subhanahu wa ta'ala for our Zoom. Or our, our screens that are not working at the moment. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with, uh, you know, even this meeting, even if it's just sound. Then it let this sound you know, reach everyone. Phones. We've got all these, you know, modes of communication inside of us. Yeah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, you know, that we, of those who maintain ties, mm. you know, why is nobody asking me? I should be the one to be asking. Ask them and make that connection. Silman yeah. qatak. That was the instruction given to the Prophet yeah. To the Prophet As if he's breaking ties. Yeah. The ones who break in ties, you be the one who's, who doesn't sever, but the one who jo- enjoins this, this, these connections. Yeah. And be good to them. Eat up means give to them if they need assistance, if they need any, anything bring in, if they're on lockdown, if there's self-isolation. You should be the ones who should be constantly knowing what's still going on, even from your lockdown positions or whatever you are. And he says, and this, this next part, so all of them you can just embody in the Prophet's Sunnah. 
Ihsan, yeah. who's going to be better? Yani, uh, yani, Ihsan, as he said, and he told it in the Hadith of Jibreel, he says, uh, and, and Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see him, and if you don't see him, know that he's seeing you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is Ihsan. And, and, and the, the Ahl Sufiya, they're going to they're gonna tell you exactly that it takes a lifetime to figure that out. It takes a lifetime to work at that. It doesn't come easy, but we have to work at that. And that's what juhud is. Juhud, you have to strive for that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that. It starts off with the takbir. In your prayers, start with the takbir. Focus on that. You make sure you, you, you're not getting distracted. You're making sure you focus for the takbir. Then you're going to start on the tawjiyah and your thanaz when you're praying inside your salah. Make sure you get the subhanallah and you pray wajjahtu. And you're facing Allah. My whole being is towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And work through your prayers. And if you, if you lapse or if, if you start getting distracted, go back to a takbir and work your way. That one rakat might take you, you know, years and years and years. But then you've perfected that one prayer. And then you've, then you've perfected your Quran. And then you, you, and it's getting harder for the shaitan to work into that heart. That's what you call ihsan. And, and it doesn't come easy. People work and work and work at that. But when you work at, when you get to that maqam, Allah Akbar, you're going to be praying in salah, you're going to be seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of you. Allah Akbar. Allah. When you sleep in the night, you'll see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah. Like of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, rahmatullahi alayhi. Hundreds and hundreds of times he saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in, in his dream state. And his dream state, we know that he didn't sleep much. So whatever he had was the little, uh, you know, little snoozes in between his ibadah. That's when he sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh -huh. That's his heart, it's just there, he's with Allah. There is nothing else. Wa fi qawli ta'ala, afwan, he says, the Musannif, uh, he's continuing with that verse, he says, wa yin ha'anil fahsha, he says, and, and, he, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits you. So all of that ita is the ka, wa yin ha, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits you. By extension, look to the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Will you see any fahsha? La, you're not going to see it. His, you won't see any indecency, no indecent words, no indecent fa'il. Wal munkar, any evil in the, in the life of the Prophet Wal baghd, or any transgressions. Transgression means zulm upon anybody else. Or anything, or any animal, or any plant, or any child, or any woman, or any building. Allahu Akbar. Allah's as a messenger, sallam, his life was without any transgression to anyone. Let alone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He never transgressed the boundaries of Allah or to the people or to his family or to the you know to the few musallis in his in his masjid or anything that is the way to be you know, we, we, we should live a life that we never ever hurt anybody harmed anybody transgressions wa qawlihi ta'ala wasbir ala ma asabak inna dhalika min azmin umur we finish there and have patience allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on what afflicts you and this is so pertinent to what we say we, you know in in our t uh, you know the Trials and our uh, troubles that are afflicting the world. This is what they class in the terminology of the ulama, waba. It's not, it's not a bala, it's a waba. A waba is an affliction, a trial or whatever. It comes in, in many, many different forms. And it's happened many, many times throughout the world. And those who have lived through it, those who are, you know, seen the tail end of it, those who have seen it a second time in their lives. For many of the young ones, they've probably never ever seen anything, anything like this in their lives. And we certainly haven't. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that sabr inshallah in these times. Amen. And we ask Allah to give us afiyah that he takes Amen. this, this wabar away. Amen. Wasbir, Allah says, and have patience. Ala ma asabak. What afflicts you? What afflicts you? He's not saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in his life, that was patience. In, in, in bolded, uh, displayed and highlighted to us. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Three years he has to see his daughters eating leaves. Until the, and his leaves that they weren't even edible, so they used to they caused blisters in their mouths. Oh, and which father would want to see that? But the Prophet ﷺ bore that. He witnessed his daughters get di divorced just because of that message that he was coming with to worship one Allah. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wasbir ala ma asabak. Inna dalika min azmin umur. These are from the firm things of iman. These are from the firmness of iman and the firmness of matters, if you will. And that's what Allah's Messenger وسلم, had all the way through his life. You're going to see sabr encapsulated in the seerah of the Prophet وسلم. All these are just giving you examples after examples after examples. وَلَمَنْ صَبَرَ وَغَفَرَ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَمِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ And we'll continue with that inshallah next week. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who 
embody these and have the tawfiq to read this Quran and read the tafasir and sit in the halakas of Quran. We we need Quran more than anything in this in, in this time. We need we, we shouldn't have a day that we go without reading reading or fort any they, they say that, you know the every surah of the Quran is a fortress for us. And no doubt it's a fortress in these times. We need fortresses. We need protection. Everybody's having hand sanitizers or whatever they have to you know mm-hmm. to make sure that they protect themselves from whatever. The fortress that you want to protect yourselves, the Quran. That is that is the fortress. That and the Quran and the seerah of the Prophet mm-hmm. and the khuluq of the Prophet are inseparable. They are coming hand in hand, and both of them are the fortresses that we need. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the remembering of his beloved Prophet mm-hmm. that Allah removes this waba, mm-hmm. takes it away. Mm-hmm. Just like we gather here in small groups, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gathers in bigger groups in the Haram and Makki, in all the Masajid, in all the Madaris. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us openings in our hearts. May Allah uh, take away the laxness and the laziness that's creeping into our hearts and our homes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring light into our homes and our hearts. The light of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah give us akhlaq of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah give us tasamuh. May Allah give us sabr. May Allah give us afu. May Allah subhanahu wa taala protect us from fahsha, uh, with dhulm and jawr. May Allah subhanahu wa taala make us of those and with those who have the khuluq and and beautiful character. The rubs off on us and gives us that beautiful character. May Allah take a bad character away from us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from hurting anybody from the makhluk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam.